In this video, I'll be going over a few more sine and cosine graphs. Uh, this one says y equals negative cosine of 2x minus pi. So remember, we want to write this into the standard form and identify um, a, b, c, and d. So a cosine of b x minus c plus d. Um, so what we're going to see here is this will be y is equal to negative 1 cosine. This 2 is the b value, so I'm going to factor out a 2. And what we're left with is x minus, uh, since I factored out of t a 2 out of this term and this term, I need to uh, divide this term by 2, so I get minus pi over 2. And if you're unsure if that is correct, just go ahead and multiply this back out and you'll see that we get the original equation. And then lastly, plus d, well there's plus 0 here. Um, okay, so um, we can say that the a value is negative 1 and that corresponds to the amplitude which is the absolute value of a. So this is the absolute value of negative 1 which is 1, but because it's negative, we're going to have a vertical reflection, which just means the graph is going to flip upside down. Um, the B value is 2, and the B value tells us uh, or gives us uh, the shape of the length of the period. So the period is 2 pi over B, which is 2 pi over 2, which is pi, and so that's the period length. Um, C is pi over 2, um, and so this means we're going to have a horizontal shift um, right uh, pi over 2 units. And again, make sure we say right here. We don't want to just say pi over 2. We need to say the direction. And then the D value is 0, so uh, that means there's no vertical shift. Alright, so putting this all together, um, to graph this, what we're going to do is we're going to take the period length, which is pi, and I'm going to map it out on a number line, and what we do is we split it into four quarters. So half of pi is pi over 2, half of pi over 2 is pi over 4, and then to get uh, this third uh, position, I add pi over 4 plus pi over 2. So pi over 2 is the same as 2 pi over 4, getting the common denominator. So this is 3 pi over 4. Uh, so I split up that initial period into four equal uh, uh, quarters. And then the last thing to do with that period length is um, to apply this shift. And it says write pi over 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add pi over 2 to each uh, of these four positions. Okay, so the new number line, I'm going to have 0 plus pi over 2. Well, that's pi over 2. Um, I'm going to do uh, the ones that have common denominators together first. So this middle one right here is pi over 2 plus pi over 2. Well, that's pi. Um, pi over, oops, I made a mistake. This should say pi over 2 here. I want to add pi over 2 to each position. Well, pi over 2 plus pi over 4, I already did that. Um, up above in the black. Um, so that's 3 pi over 4. Um, here, pi plus pi over 2. Well, pi is 2 pi over 2. So 2 pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 2. And then this right here, writing that with a common denominator as this 4, I'm going to have 2 pi over 4. So this is 5 pi over 4 right there. Okay, so there is uh, my number line that I'm going to use on the graph. So I'm going to go ahead and map this out. Let's say this is pi over 2 here, and I can just do two boxes for each quarter. So uh, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, 5 pi over 4, and 3 pi over 2. Uh, this is a cosine graph. So remember, the cosine graph, the parent function of that, starts at the maximum and ends at the maximum, and then halfway through is where the minimum value is. But because I have a vertical reflection, this is going to get flipped upside down. So 
oh, and then uh, the amplitude here is one. So it's gonna go bounce between positive and negative one. So um, I'll put it uh, four boxes up. It doesn't really matter here. So um, instead of starting up here at the maximum because I have the vertical reflection, we're gonna start down here at the minimum. It crosses at the quarter points then I have a maximum, and then I'm back down to the minimum at three pi over two. So putting it all together, uh, this graph is gonna look something like that. Okay, so there is one period length, and that period length again is between pi over two and three pi over two, which is pi, which we saw from above. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to say what the domain is and what the range is. Well the domain is again all real numbers for these sine and cosine graphs and then the range is what's the smallest y value to the greatest y value or in other words what's the minimum value and the maximum value and it's negative one to one. All right I think we have two more here. Um, this one we another cosine graph um, and this looks good because it's already in the, the standard form, so I can readily uh, identify A. I guess B is 1, so I could factor out a 1 here, but it doesn't change what that C value is. Okay, so A is 3, so that tells me that my amplitude is the absolute value of 3, which is 3. Because that leading coefficient is positive, there's no vertical reflection. Uh, the B value is 1, and so remember the period is 2 pi over B, which is 1, so 2 pi is the period length. Um, for the horizontal shift, that corresponds to the pi over 2. Because it's plus pi over 2, we're going to say left pi over 2 units. And then for the vertical shift, we're going to say down 1 because of this negative 1 right here. And then as before, we're going to map out the period length on a number line, so from 0 to 2 pi. Cut that into 4 quarters. Half of pi is pi over 2. And then pi over 2 plus pi gives me this third quarter. Pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 to get a common denominator, so 3 pi over 2 here. All right, and then the horizontal shift is saying I'm going to go left uh, pi over 2 units. I'm going to subtract pi over 2 from each of these. So my new number line, 0 minus pi over 2 is negative pi over 2. Pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is 0. Um, I already have a common denominator here, so that's just going to be pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2 is pi. And then here, 2 pi over 4, that's the same as 4 pi over 2. So this is 3 pi over 2. Okay, so I'll map that out here. Um, this time I'm going to do three boxes for each. It doesn't uh, matter as long as I'm consistent. So negative pi over 2 to 0 to pi over 2, 1, 2, to pi to 3 pi over 2. Sometimes it's good to, sp to space it out just so I have a little more room to write. Um, the amplitude here is 3, but I'm shifting down one unit. So instead of, I'll do it over, instead of bouncing between 3 and negative 3, I need to shift everything down one unit. So this is going to go between 2 and negative 4. Okay, and then cosine always starts at the maximum. Um, and then the minimum is, oops, uh, it, uh, before I did any shifting, the graph would have crossed at 0 and pi over 2. It would have hit that horizontal axis. But the horizontal axis shifts down. So one way to do this is to actually get a better visual of what that, ver uh, what that horizontal axis uh, is and it's negative 1 now. So I'm going to cross at negative 1 at 0 and pi. And then at pi over 2 is when I hit the minimum and then at 3 pi over 2 is when we hit the maximum. So drawing a smooth curve through those key points. 
and there we have it and you know you could kind of clean this up to show that this is pi right here um, but there you go and again the domain is all real numbers and the range is from negative 4 to 2 including those endpoints just double checking my work all right and then the last one in this video we have a sine graph writing this into standard form I have negative 5 sine now this is this uh, sometimes is confusing to students uh, the argument for sine is only X um, so that negative 4 corresponds to a vertical shift that's the D value so if you wanted to write this in the standard form B is 1 here and then I have X minus 0 minus 4 so that's how we could rewrite this in standard form to make um, the A, B, C, and D values all explicit. Um, so let's go through. Um, the amplitude is the absolute value of that leading coefficient. So absolute value of negative 5. So 5, but because it's negative, we have a vertical reflection. The period length is 2 pi over b, so the b value is 1, so 2 pi over 1, so 2 pi again. Um, there is no horizontal shift because the c value is 0. The vertical shift is down 4 units. So this one is going to go quickly because the thing that takes the longest on these questions is usually that horizontal shift. So we already saw a period length when it's uh, 2 pi units. So breaking this into quarters is going to be just like that previous one. And I don't have to add or subtract anything here. The difference uh, with this sine graph from the previous ones is, well, sine begins at th or crosses the horizontal axis at the beginning, middle, and end. And then it's the maximum and minimum at the quarter points. Okay, so that's the that's the parent function for sine, but because we have the vertical re reflection, it's just going to be uh, flipped upside down. All right, so mapping out uh, the key points here. So we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Um, there's the period length. Normally, this would go between 1, 2, 3, 4, positive 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. But because we're shifting everything down 4 units, I'm not going to uh, put those on. I'm gonna, we're going to be going between uh, 1 and negative 9. Okay, So our new uh, horizontal axis is at negative 4. So I'm going to clean this up a little. Okay, so um, we're going to, on this period, we're going to cross at cross that horizontal axis at the beginning, middle, and end. And then we're going to be, the graph is going to be bouncing between 1 and negative 9. So um, this graph has the vertical reflection, so it's going to hit negative 9 at pi over 2. Then it's going to hit 1 at 3 pi over 2. So this graph looks like this. Okay. Lastly, the domain is all real numbers, like all sine and cosine graphs. And then the range is negative 9 to 1. And there we have it.